Well, today we change a reversing valve, a solenoid coil, and also a thermostat on a residential system. In this video, I'm gonna show you some tips and walk you through changing a reversing valve. And then I'm also gonna show you a process of elimination, which led me to figure out that the thermostat was bad and it was not outputting the proper voltage for the reversing valve coil. And that's why I heard this terrible noise, which you're gonna hear now. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. And hey, subscribe, hit that like button before you start the video, and also check out patreon.com slash tattydigest. So not only do we not have enough power going to this reversing valve solenoid coil that you see here, but we also have a capillary tube leaking. See, it's called a four-way valve because it has four large tubes. And it also has three capillary tubes. One of those capillary tubes is broken and it's leaking refrigerant. So it has to be replaced. I also replaced the thermostat, which was the cause of the improper voltage. I'm going to show you this valve leaking now, and then we're going to change it. Let's got a leaking reversing valve 24 volts made in china of course looks rough though looks real rough and that right there is the two male spay connectors um, i plugged it back up of course you don't hear the terrible noise but there's no coil on there so it's not going to make the noise any longer this is a heat pump condenser it's got a little defrost board and that defrost board of course has the pressure switch in and out, the M that goes to the contactor, the relay for the outdoor uh, fan motor, and then this right here is for all your inputs for the field connections that are 24 volts. This right here is the contactor, the potential relay. It drops the start winding out for the compressor, and this right here is a, a dual capacitor, and it's got three terminals, a fan terminal, which hooks to the outdoor fan motor, your common, which hooks to one leg to the contactor, and then the other leg um, to the common of the fan motor. And then you've got your hermetic terminal, which hooks uh, from one terminal of the compressor, uh, which is the start winding, goes to, into the uh, hermetic terminal, and then the other uh, wire goes to the potential relay, and it drops that winding out um, as the compressor starts. If you guys have any more questions in specific, let me know. This right here is the coil sensor and the ambient outdoor sensor. I received the new reversing valve just one day. That's pretty awesome when you get the reversing valve next day. I also got the solenoid coil. I'm going to change these. I'm going to show you what I have behind me on the ground that I've got laid out to help me change this and do it successfully without having any leaks. The reversing valve sends hot gas to the indoor coil during the winter and during the summer it sends hot gas to the outdoor coil, the condenser. So guys, let's take a look at this. So first we have our filter dryer, then we have our wet rag that we are going to wrap around this valve body to make sure that we don't get it too hot. Of course, I've got a drill, glove, channel lock, scales, refrigerant, a vacuum pump, torches, gauges, and I've got my nitrogen in the vehicle. So I gotta go get it so that I can use the nitrogen in between the vacuum, because you want to do a triple evac, and the filter dryer is going to replace the old one so that I don't have any moisture. So right now I've got the panels off to the outside heat pump condenser and there's my filter dryer which
old reversing valve out, now new reversing valve in. New reversing valve in place, ready to braise. And I've got a wet rag, actually two wet rags covering this valve to make sure that I do not egg shape the little inner valve that slides back and forth. All right, let's braise it up. Old filter dryer has been taken out of the system. Now to put the new filter dryer in. Little trick, if you can't get the fitting to go onto the existing copper that you just brazed, just take a pair of snips and open up the ends, okay? Snips right there. I'll show you how I do it. Place the snips inside and turn. Put a little pressure. And then it'll open it up and it'll fit right on. New filter dryer in place, ready to braise. So if you're running out of solder, but you got a couple small pieces, just put them together. I'll show you. Now we have a full stick of solder and I always like to heat it up and bend a little L so I can get those hard to reach places like this right here. Underneath, whoop. Anyways, I'm gonna solder this back up. That way I can get this on the nitrogen and then the vacuum. Reversing valve in place. We have the new coil. Reversing valve in place, new coil in place, ready to go. I have my filter dryer brazed in. And now I put nitrogen in, made sure it didn't leak, and then I put my vacuum pump on. So it's pulling out all the moisture and the non-condensables. About to charge this thing up and get it running again. So we have done a triple evacuation where we do nitrogen up to 300 and then we hold it for 15 minutes and then we put the vacuum on and then we put nitrogen back on again. Now we're charging. I've got field piece wireless scales I use to charge the system back up. This uh, equipment holds five pounds, eight ounces. So that's what I'll be putting back in. Right now we're charging through the liquid side here. Always put liquid in with 410A and you factory charge through the liquid line. I'll put five pounds, eight ounces in. I'm using this gauge right here and the refrigerant is moving from here in and then out to my liquid line. Close up on where the reversing valve was leaking. Part of it ready to go. Unit holds five pounds, eight ounces, York two ton, five pounds, eight ounces have been put in the equipment. Pressures are 105 and 250 right now. We'll measure superheat and subcooling. We'll know it's charged properly. Measured superheat and subcooling. The unit is properly charged. Now we're at 115 and 260. And it is 75 degrees outside today. Feels good. Measured the suction line temperature with the probe. Liquid line temperature with the probe. Hooked up to the board output to the valve. 25 volts. Go ahead and take it off. The whole problem with this is the thermostat shorted. Watch. All right, so we got it calling right here. Okay, as soon as I take away this call, um, it's still calling to the thermostat. Watch. See that, guys? So right now, with it calling, it's reading 23 volts. Right? When I take this off, watch. Three volts. So, I've got to have this the red to the orange right here to make the call because at the thermostat, the voltage is not actually being produced. It's not making. 
Because there's a short. Now we're going to jump it at the stat. Bypass the stat by putting R and O together. Now I'll check. Now leaving the wires off out here. Thermostat's calling for cooling. Making the check to the valve. With 25 volts. So now we don't have the chatter. It, the voltage was not there and that's what caused the coil to disengage and engage and disengage and engage which caused the shattering or ch the chattering sound. So now we got the proper voltage. We had a bad thermostat which caused the improper voltage and we had a leak on our reversing valve. So we changed the reversing valve, we changed the thermostat, went ahead and changed the solenoid coil because it got really hot and I was afraid that that duration of the problem could have caused a short life. So it could have failed somewhere down the road. And if this video helps you at all in giving you valuable information or gives you value in any way, please go to patreon.com slash taddydigest and subscribe. Thanks.